This is a study, uh, up-to-date study, from Portugal by a very good group, actually, led by uh, Carlos Vasconcelos, presented at the World Lupus Meeting. And they said that in their retrospective study, 8.2% of lupus patients and 20% of primary APS patients had at least one neuropsychiatric event attributed to autoimmune disease. So really, in a, in a major national survey, saying what we've been saying in the last few minutes. Now, there are many papers, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to go into them because it's not my expertise, but uh, verbal memory, working memory, verbal fluency, psychomotor speed, cognitive flexibility, have all been published and all been found to be decreased in patients with Hughes syndrome. This is a paper, an older paper, from Hanley, who did a lot of work in the early days uh, of cognitive and antiphospholipid. They did a five-year study and found persistently positive anticardiolipid antibodies. Those with persistent positivity had a reduction in psychomotor speed, conceptual reasoning, and executive ability. And finally, dementia. I mentioned that those patients untreated can go on to multiple spots on the MRI, the sky at night, and dementia. Recurrent stroke, multi-infarct dementia. This was a paper that we published back in 1987 with our late Ron Asherson, one of my fellows. There have been reports of psychosis too, although I think this is less commonly reported than the memory problems of antiphospholipid. This is a study from the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry by Schwartz. 34 patients with psychosis, 12 had positive APL, uh, and again, I'm not qualified to judge um, the, the, the correctness or otherwise of that study. Behavioral and cognitive and this is in the mouse model, of Schoenfeld and others, and they've shown gross behavioral abnormalities in the mouse model of APS. Finally, cerebral blood flow. And this may be the salient feature in our syndrome, that this is not so much antibody mediated as a sluggish circulatory problem. This is a study published in lupus by Medina. They looked at primary APS, they did transcranial Doppler studies, and they found abnormalities in cerebral arteries. And of course, those who can afford, which we can't, to have uh, SPECT and other studies uh, in these patients, are finding flow abnormalities and local ischemia problems. Just to complete the picture, of course, there are other neurological features in the, in the lupus and antiphospholipid patients. Uh, sleep disturbance. Number of our patients attend our sleep clinic at St. Thomas's uh, with a lot of sleep associated features. Temporal lobe epilepsy, that comes up a lot in our patients. And I perhaps will mention that uh, in the talk after lunch. Sensitivity to drugs. A lot of these patients are very sensitive to some of the neuropsychiatric drugs that we give, uh, and even in small doses seem to be uh, uh, abnormally sensitive. And central nervous system is not on its own. Peripheral nervous system seems to be affected by what we think is relative ischemia. This is a study um, of peripheral neuropathy, paresthesia, abnormal reflexes, and so on. So, I want to come back towards the end with what I'm going to talk about after lunch, and that is some of the doctor's letters that we see. Now, all of you must get heart, I don't know if you call them here, heart sink patients. Um, we, we get our fair share of them. And I can't resist this one. Um, this is a true letter sent to me by a colleague in the days of political incorrectness. Um, Dear Dr. Hughes, I'm delighted to tell you that you've won Mrs. Shuttleworth in our hospital drawer. Um, this was, it should be a nameless doctor, but his name is Tony Hicklin, and he's a great friend of mine, and he probably struck off by now. But anyway, um, this is Mrs. Shuttleworth. This was a letter sent to me by Mrs. Shuttleworth telling me of her symptoms. 
uh, and she drew it in a cartoon way. Headaches, blurred vision, shortness of breath, tummy pains, knee pains, cold feet, fainting, low blood pressure, poor memory, dry mouth, palpitations, hip tingling. Um, so what do you make of this? Well, actually, she had Hughes syndrome. She had antiphospholipid syndrome, but she also had POTS. Now, I, I'm sure you all know what POTS is, but I didn't. It's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's an autonomic neuropathy, and it's those people who stand up and faint. They get uh, inappropriate tachycardia. They get recurrent syncope. They're people who faint in assembly in school. And they get chronic fatigue syndrome. It's a female predominant. But interestingly, it's been associated with Sjogren's syndrome. Sjogren's is the central autoimmune disease. Dry eyes, dry mouth, fibromyalgia, ANA positive often. Impaired memory and joint pain. So there are features which hint at a link with aut autonomic disorders and autoimmune disorders. And one hypothesis could be that maybe a number of autonomic features, including postural uh, POTS, POTS could be associated with the Hughes syndrome. Well, needless to say, we, we collected in quick succession in our busy clinic 14 cases now of POTS in patients with the antiphospholipid syndrome. So really to complete the picture, we see brain, peripheral nerves, and autonomic nerve problems in these patients. So almost a full house. It does look as if the nervous system is vulnerable to ischemia. Are there any therapeutic implications? Well, this is a true letter from one of my patients who we started heparin in. And we use this a lot. I'm coming back to this in a minute. Uh, a, a two to three week course of self-administered heparin, completely safe. And this patient wrote back and saying, within 48 hours of starting heparin, headache gone, tinnitus gone, stomach pains, which is presumably uh, uh, celiac angina, um, numbness in the hands, palpitations, balance gone, brain fog, 50% improved. Interestingly, none of those symptoms had previously responded to conventional POTS treatment. So I think, in summary, that the ripples spread of the antiphospholipid syndrome, and they touch upon psychiatry as well as neurology, I I'm quite convinced as a clinician. <laughs>